Okay. Uh, yes. Hi, everybody. I'm I'm Jonathan Chiang, or you can just call me John Chiang. Um, yeah, just a bit of a background. Uh, this is my second hackway actually. So, uh, thanks to King Ming. Uh, he's my new colleague actually. Uh, he introduced me to uh this this hacker space lah in that sense. Um, so yeah lah, He asked me yeah if I have anything to talk about, I can come here and talk about. And I guess I have something to share lah. Um. So just a bit of uh, who am I? Um, I'm an R&D engineer in the defense industry. So uh, I work in CSIT uh, as a cybersecurity embedded researcher. Uh, my previous background, I was uh, in private sector for uh, about five years. Uh, I was in HP and Seagate, uh, both as a firmware engineer as well. Um, I do freelance landscape and architecture photo uh, photography on the side. Uh, I think CK knows about that. <laughs> yeah. And uh, yeah, from time to time, I do tinker with uh with electronics um even though my my background is firmware engineering i i i probably focus more on the the embedded software part than the hardware so i'm also a bit fresh in, in hardware so uh pardon my noobness if if any yeah so okay um just a bit about the the game boy color yeah um is uh i think for the older folks over here or maybe uh if you are younger and you are interested in, in retro gaming um yes it's a very classic uh handheld uh gaming platform um and it's unique in the sense that uh when it came out it was actually one of the first uh handhelds that was uh backwards compatible so before the game boy colored they had the game boy pocket and the, the original game boy the huge gray brick yeah that has the terrible screen the screen is green <laughs> the screen is green and there's no backlight so the contrast is really terrible so um the original one was was pretty bad but the gameplay was good so um it was a cult classic lah. uh but yes the game boy color was was unique in the sense that uh there was this backwards compatibility and i think for nintendo uh going forwards to their future consoles they tried to have this uh kind of backward comp compatibility with their previous con consoles like the Game Boy Advance will be compatible with Game Boy and Game Boy uh, Game Boy Color games, and uh, the Nintendo DS would be also uh, backwards compatible co compatible to Game Boy Advance games, and so and so forth. Yep. So okay, the Game Boy Color, yeah, it had a fifteen bit color screen, which is quite a lot for its time because it came out in nineteen ninety eight. Then you know if you were familiar with um handheld computing devices of that era, like you know your palm tops, your PDAs, um. They those are really simple devices, so they can throw. They will just throw whatever they they can on the spec sheet. Like they will tell you, oh, it has like a eight megahertz Dragon Ball processor, and it has like a four four zero nine six color screen and what. And that that used to be a spec, you know. I mean, now you don't really think about that because screens can show like billions of colors. But last time, like four K color screen, that's a big thing. So yeah, you have like thirty two K colors on 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 a on a Game Boy on a on a on a handheld gaming system. That's kind of pretty big. Yeah, but there's no backlight and supports uh wireless communications through infrared. Um, yes, uh, lots of games, lots of classic titles, and uh, today is actually very well documented with a lot of hobbies, uh, hackers and uh homebrew engineers, the kind of thing they create like games and uh, indie developers, things like that. Yeah. So the 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 best thing is is that it's well supported by third parties with a lot of replacement parts. So if yours is spoiled, you can find a part and try to re repair yours. Okay, so yeah, what happened to mine? Yeah, it just won't turn on because, you know, after a decade of uh, growing mold in my cabinet, um, yeah, something inside must have broke. So tarnished over or broke or, or some, uh, in some way. But um, the screen looks broken, but actually I think it's just delaminated. So it, it looks like cracks, but it's, it's not actually cracked. I didn't show it across the room because I can't, uh, <laughs> I can't complete Super Mario or something. I still can't though, but yes. <laughs> yeah, so uh, it, it looks cracked, but it's actually del delaminated. Um, but yes, the main thing is it just won't turn on. So what I did was um I asked a few colleagues who are uh more well versed in, in hardware repairing and they told me, yeah, you can search for the schematic online and probe it with a multimeter and, and see what's wrong. Lah. Yeah. So okay, I took it apart and I took a look at the PCB. Uh even though it's been resting in my cabinet for so long, um more wise on the PCB is minimal. There's a bit, so I clean it up with uh, isopropyl alcohol. More or less, it looks pretty clean. And yeah, um, yeah. I started the probe, uh, starting with the power supply to see what's wrong. Because usually when it won't turn on, right? Um, I think the lowest hanging fruit would be yeah, power supply, 
the switch, things like that. So you just try to start basic, you know, don't think about like, what if the CPU, you know, something is like spoiled or whatever that kind of thing, or some capacitor capaci capaci blow or they're short, some components elsewhere, then I have to go and test one by one. Um, can think about that later if let's say power supply is fully functional, but uh, we test the power supply and see whether it's working first. So that's what I did. Um, pull out the schematic online and um, thanks to the either the reverse engineers uh, on uh, that that uploaded this schematic or maybe some leaks you know happened over the years. Some engineer from Nintendo uh, reviewed the, the schematic or what yeah, but the, the schematics are online. Um, I started with the, the switch and yeah, started to probe the switch and according to the schematic, the, um, the C and the three leads, if you see on the, the, the circle part, um, they, they should be connected to VCC. And the one lead and the should ground C when it's in the off position. So the, the switch, right, when you, when you flip it, right, C and C will be connected. And then it will be connected to VCC, then that's how the Game Boy powers up. But if it's power off, uh, one and C is connected and one grounds it. So there's no power. So that, that's what I did. So I start to probe it and see what's, what's wrong. So, okay, when I probe the one and, and C um, lead when it's in the off position, I uh, found that it's perfectly grounded. Uh, so that's fine. But uh, when I flip it on and I put C and 3, I find that C has a very high impedance value uh, when flipped on. So probably something in the switch has broken, like maybe tarnished over or something like that. It, it shouldn't be so high. It should be uh, a, a full shot because you turn it on, it should shot, right? Yeah. So it seems like um, the 3 lead and C is not connecting properly. Yeah, it's not connected to VCC properly. So how I, I tested my theory by just simply shorting uh, 3 and C together with just a short yeah. jumper wire. And then when I put in the, the batteries, yeah, it powers on. But of course now it doesn't power off because it's fully shorted and um, yeah, it won't be powered off. La. If you look at the diagram just now, yeah, uh, 1 and, and C, when, when it's uh, connected, it should be shorted to ground. But if you short uh, uh, the 1 and, and, and 3, uh, uh, the C and N3 leads together, yeah, it, it is fully just powered on all the time. Yes. So what I did was uh, I ordered uh, a bunch of spare parts online and uh, after they arrived, I started to work on my Game Boy. Um, first, I just uh, applied some uh, solder flux on it uh, to sort of like prepare the area and I started to desolder it with like uh, the soldering, uh, the copper wick. Yeah, to remove the, the original switch. Yes. So uh, the second picture is actually the, the replacement part. Yeah, um, the, the new switch is actually uh, kind of smaller than the original. So what I had to do to make it work with the, the original mechanical switch is that I could put like a piece of foam inside my Game Boy so it, that it can, it will be, uh, so that the, the, the switch, the mechanical portion can connect to, to, that, to that switch. If not, it won't, it won't actuate. Yeah, so that's the issue with like the replacement part. You can't find an exact replica um, copy of the original part unless you are lucky and someone sells a perfectly uh, functional Game Boy and you take you go and cannibalize parts from one Game Boy to another. But um, if you were to go to AliExpress or any other vendors out there, um, they will give you an equivalent part, but you might need to make some modifications to it. Yeah, so this is from uh, AliExpress. I think this switch is about uh, $3.00. Pretty cheap, yeah. I bought like three or four just in case I screw up, you know, yeah. So, okay, the screen and case replacement. Um, so the thing is, you can't find the original screen uh, online already unless you are willing to cannibalize a perfectly functional Game Boy, which I wouldn't want to. So I went to this uh, weird website called Funny Playing. <laughs> the name is really weird. Uh, you can find them on AliExpress as well. They are China-based kind of, uh, they make, yeah, they are, they, are, they are OEM China manufacturer. They make replacement Game Boy uh, parts. Um, this screen itself is about 52. This in Sing dollars. So it's pretty okay. La, because it has backlight and there's a few other features that I will run through later. La. Yeah, so it's not bad uh, for, the, for the price and the features that you get. Uh, the thing is, um, the thing about this screen is that it's actually slightly bigger than the original screen by about 25% bigger. Yeah, the dimensions are all here on this slide. Um, so that... So you can't, you can't use the original case unless you're willing to 
unless you are willing to uh, disfigure your original case by cutting it. But very sayang, I don't want to go and cut my original case apart. And you know, plastic is really nice and, and thick. They don't make cases like that anymore. Now, nowadays, electronics are kind of like glass and metal and flimsy and stuff like that. But yeah, I didn't want to go and cut uh, my original case. So I ordered a new replacement case from them as well. They, they Fortunately, they make replacement cases for that with the correct dimensions that would fit their new screen. Yeah. And uh, yes, they have a few features on their screen. They have like a touch sensor to control the brightness. And there's this grid mode thing because the newer screens, right? They are not like the old LCD screens where you have lines separating the pixels. Then you get that old school Game Boy vibe. The new screens are totally clean, very, very nice and clean looking. No, no lines at all. But you can turn on like this grid mode to, origin, to emulate the original screen. Yeah, which I can show you later on. Yeah, pretty cool. Okay, so... The parts came in a very nice case. It looks like a cartridge. Yeah. Uh, so we're here as well. Uh, and then this is the original case that um this is the replacement case that uh I got from uh the vendor, the funny playing. Yes, yeah. Okay, I also ordered a new speaker and um I soldered uh that on too as well. And I also, I mean, the, the screen installation itself is pretty straightforward. Uh, you you just uh slot in the the flex cable to the to the original slot and uh, you just need to solder C to the to the VCC of uh, uh or rather the power pad for the uh the new screen. Yes. So that when you flip the screen it also turns on the uh when you flip the switch it, it also turns on the screen. Yes. So after that uh when I put everything back together yeah it turns on. Great yeah uh the only issue is that I think um there's some issue with my, my speaker. It, it, it works actually, there's sound, but uh, even after replacement, the sound is still very soft. So I think the, the dial to uh, adjust the volume is probably yeah, maybe tarnished over or something. So the, the resistance value is very high. So the, the sound is really very, very soft. So I, I probably need to replace that part too. I actually ordered it. Uh, it's not here yet. Um, I will go and replace it. And if you are interested, I can give you guys an update whether that works. But yes, uh, sound actually works, but it's very, very soft. Um, but yeah, I think the rest I've gone through before. Um, it has grid mode, it has uh, different color, uh, different brightness modes. And um, yeah, the only issue is that it gets very bright. So if you are running off like the standard alkaline A batteries, right, it, it pulls up a lot. Uh, it really is a power, it's a power drain. Yeah, your, your A batteries would not last like more than an hour. Yeah, you'll probably need like lithium batteries or what. But if you lower down the screen brightness or turn it off, yeah, it lasts pretty long. Yeah. They also um actually uh yeah, going back, uh, yeah, they also actually uh sell a replacement lithium ion battery for this. But I didn't want to use theirs because uh you need to mutilate your your board a bit more and you have to cut out your case to fit their battery and you have to switch their you have to make some modifications to the to the power original power supply of the, the game boy to fit their new uh, 3.7 volt battery that's like you need to step it down and all that kind of stuff but I, I didn't want to go and um mutilate my, my game boy any further because i just want to use the original double a batteries this is like the kind of the vibe that you you have from the original one. So yeah, I just keep it at that. If I need, if need be, then I will just use like the lithium, like the energizer lithium battery. Those should last a bit longer. Yeah. Okay, so uh some future work. Uh, I mean now that's done, right? Um there's a guy who actually created a Wi-Fi Game Boy cartridge. Uh probably I will look into that, see whether I can um start working on something like this. Uh he gave like the schematics and the the layout and everything, yeah, on his GitHub. Uh, I need to be a bit familiar with SMD soldering, which actually I'm not, <laughs> but that's always the first for everything, right? Mm -hmm. So you just try and then see what breaks and then, you know, get frustrated along the way and then burn your fingers a bit, you probably learn. Uh, but yes, um, he created a Game Boy, a Wi-Fi Game Boy cartridge that can uh, interface with um, an app that, create, that he created as well, runs through uh, ESP32. So he has a Wikipedia app for it that you can pull out like Wikipedia articles. Yeah. So you can use the, the Game Boy SDK. Um, one of them is known uh, as the GBDK 2020. Uh, I think it's very well documented. Um, mostly written in C. Um, so you can like, yeah, just code whatever game or app that you have uh, that you want to on, on, your, on your Game Boy. And maybe 
chat GPT because why not? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. So probably that would, yeah, this will take a bit more time, but uh, yeah, if it, if it goes well, yeah, probably can pigeon that game. Very cute. Yeah. Very yes, yes, yeah. Uh, yeah. There ought to be, yeah, his, uh, his website. Actually quite cool because... That's the same guy who did the game for a capture. Yes, yes, that's the, the same guy, yeah. Um, yeah, he's quite amazing because his background, he's, he's not a software engineer, he's not a hardware engineer, he's a physicist in his day trade, you know, but he does this, you know, I, I don't know how he picks it up, but well, he's good. <laughs> yeah, so I'll be just pigging back, pigging back of his, uh, his, his uh, initial work, yeah. Uh, hopefully I can recreate something like like his and uh, yeah I'll let you guys know if I if I do. <laughs> yep. Uh, that's all that I have. Pretty quick. Uh, let me know if you have any uh questions and Game Boy is here. You can play with. <laughs> oh no no, it's my phone. It's just my yes iPhone. Very good. Yes. Yeah. Just a two point five times zoom. Yeah. Feel not bad, right? Yeah. And that's the iPhone twelve is. Like two year, three old, three year old phone mm. now. I think that's about two year old phone. Yeah, still pretty good. Mm. I thought you found those uh, microscope setup. Oh, I don't have that. Yeah. Those are expensive. Yeah, that would be nice though. Can't justify that. I don't even have a. I don't have an oscilloscope at home. I think I should get one. Yeah, that would be useful. But yes, it's a simple scope. But yeah, yeah. Um, all on iPhone like features. Yeah. Okay, yes, uh, Game Boy is here. You can play with it. Uh, yeah, I, I, after playing with it for a while, I realized one interesting caveat of older games is that they are really, really very hard. I forgot how hard they were. Yes, you, if you, you know, nowadays, the newer games, like they sort of like ease you into a game that's like tutorials and stuff like that. Okay, like maybe for the exception of Dark Souls, lah, but, you know, you'll get, get good. And, but yes, uh, most games you would sort of like ease you in with tutorials and stuff like that the, the learning curve will be steep but the older game titles are like they are really hard and frustrating I, I think that's how they they try to make you you know play <laughs> because you want to you want to progress you have to get good right <laughs> then when you get good then you can you can get the later stages yeah so they are really really difficult i still haven't completed super mario though so yeah <laughs> okay yeah that's all thank you <laughs>